All right, so the White House now is calling the Taliban, get this, quote, businesslike and, quote, professional. Yeah, really. Um, Secretary of State Blinken can't make up his mind. We're going to get to that in a second. Joining us now to discuss on set, Joe Concha, Fox News contributor and media columnist for The Hill. Now, uh, I, I'm just going to read this. This is from today's press conference. Okay, you want me over here? Okay. Uh, here's the latest from, actually, it wasn't the White House. I believe this statement came from the State Department. No, it was the White House, the National Security Council. And I quote, the Taliban have been cooperative in facilitating the departure of American citizens and lawful permanent residents on charter flights from someplace. Hikia. I can't really see what there's from, but it's from, anyway, one of the airports. They have shown flexibility and they have been businesslike and professional in our dealings with them in this effort. This is a positive first step. Now, here comes Peter Ducey, our Peter Ducey, asking the next question. Can you explain a little bit more about why the White House in a statement is calling the Taliban businesslike and professional? Well, I would note that in that statement, what we were announcing was the fact that a Qatar uh, Airlines flight successfully landed in Qatar with American citizens, legal permanent residents, and Afghans uh, on board who uh, joined us in our fight over the last several years. Uh, we wanted to note that the Taliban was cooperative in facilitating the departure of these American citizens and legal permanent residents from HKIA. Really? Okay, so here, Joe Concha, there's a couple of questions that I have. You've okay. got to help straighten me out. Mm -hmm. First of all, a positive first step to what? I mean, their Taliban is terrorists, yes. thugs, criminals. They're going house to house, executing people. Right. There's an awful picture floating around the Internet today, how they've tortured um, Afghan journalists, for example, just awful stuff. Right. Um, and, of course, they're in cahoots with al-Qaeda, and they're going to be a homeland for terrorism. So I, I didn't understand this. Positive first step for what? That sounded like a press release for the 1960s flight crew for Pan Am, right? <laughs> just, boy, they're being so businesslike the way they get people out of here. Yeah, yeah they are businesslike, Larry, in the way they carry out beheadings uh, in executions, like you say. Uh, they're very businesslike in terms of the way they stone women to death in soccer stadiums, right? They're very precise with that. They're practically a combination of Jack Welsh meets Hugh Hefner <laughs> as far as negotiating deals to harbor al-Qaeda so al-Qaeda can strike us like they did 20 years ago. I like Welsh part. I love Jack Welsh. Hefner? Hefner is a great business. Oh, okay. Well, we'll leave we're that. We're talking flights again. Another right? segment. I'm trying okay. to tie all this together. <laughs> you know, the, the point is that in, in these cases, we're being a little bit too polite hmm. with the Taliban. It makes you wonder who has the leverage here. Clearly, the Taliban does because our military is no longer there. They control and call all the shots, Larry. Yeah, well, see, the right, right. To all, but the, the first step thing troubled me, Joe, because mm -hmm. it sounded like the first step towards recognizing this terrorist government right. and then providing them money, uh, you know, to assist them, which I got to tell you, I've always suspected uh, Secretary of State Blinken and the NSC and President Biden. I mean, I think down the road they would love to recognize this government. Wouldn't that be incredible? And it would be the worst thing in the world. And it didn't have to be this way, right? We should use Bagram Air Base to get our people out. You use Kabul International Airport, it's like going to JFK in Newark here in New York saying, hey, you guys are going to help us handle that. And by the way, your people are going to handle it, not our people. In this case, your people is the Taliban. Mm. Why didn't we wait till winter when fighting season was over and the Taliban's back in Pakistan at their bases? Why didn't we get every American out of there before we pulled the military? I'm not a military strategist, but I played risk, and I'm pretty sure mm. that's how it should have gone, Larry. I mean, we are are a couple days from the 9-11 anniversary. I hate that word. Memorialization. Yeah. I think that's what uh, we should call it. But a couple days, this Afghan catastrophe kind of overshadows that. Mm -hmm. And I think that they can't, Biden would do anything to change the subject is what I'm getting at. Right. Anything. I mean, he'll talk about uh, five trillion dollars of spending and taxing and yeah. COVID and hurricanes and global warming and Gavin Newsom in California and anything not to talk about the Afghan. But the odd thing is, Joe, and this is my question for you, 
Don't his slumping polls in all areas show these distractions are almost as bad as Afghanistan? Wow, it's like a Jedi mind trick you just did. You know exactly <laughs> where I was going to go to that because oh. the, if the goal is to pivot to somewhere else where the president is doing well, I don't know where that pivot happens. So if he wants to talk about this $5 trillion spending bill, there's still questions, big questions on how that's going to get paid for. And then even if you pass it and they say, yay, a win, well, then inflation's only going to go up, continue to go up. So then you own that going into 2022. Okay, you want to pivot to violent crime in American cities? That's not going well. You want to pivot to the border that you put your vice president in charge of. The vice president who once said that ICE is the KKK, not a good thing. So no matter where you pivot, there is nothing well going mm. well for the Biden administration right now. That's the odd thing. L last one. That I I'm so troubled by this. On the issue of, again, coming back to the Taliban, helping us, not helping us. Mm. Uh, a couple days ago, when asked, Secretary of State Blinken said the Taliban were not blocking the charter flights coming out of the other airport. Yes. Okay. Then a few days after that, he said the Taliban uh, are blocking the flights. And then today or last night, but I think it came out today, this uh, National Security Council press release said the Taliban are not. So they weren't, then they were blocking. Now they're not blocking. This is all in the space of a week's time. Who's in charge there? Do they know what they're doing? Can anybody there play this game? That's the problem, right? We don't know who's in charge in the Oval Office, right? Is it, is it President Biden's speechwriter? Is it, I don't know, Ron Klain, the, the chief of staff, who, you know, you'll find Jimmy Hoffa before you could find Ron Klain in front of a microphone doing an interview that resembles anything that's tough. It's not the vice president, clearly, because then she's more missing than Klain is, than Hoffa is, right? So who is running the country right now? That's a big question that Americans have in terms of, is this administration competent enough to handle all these things? And only eight months in, it appears that's not the case. And I think, last point quickly, tragically, the administration can't make up its mind about the Taliban, whether they're good or bad. I think they have a problem with this. I think and they know they're bad, and I think they know that they have no choice now in this case. So uh, they better be polite, because polite always works in the Middle East, right, Larry? I don't think so. No, it doesn't. I don't think so. It's my sarcasm thing. It's on. It's a no, Thursday. I do Thanks for things. coming by the set. Sure. Joe Concha, thanks again.